Hi guys, this is Brian from Website Learners. Today we are going to see how you can create a website using HTML. HTML stands for Hypertext Markup Language. It's the language which web browsers use to display web pages on your computer. In this video, we will see how you can create your very own HTML website like this. It'll have a logo with an interactive menu, some content with a button, images, and a video. We'll also make additional pages and add links to them in the menu. And by clicking on the links, you'll be taken to those pages. So after watching this video, you'll be able to create this website on your computer just by writing some HTML code on your notepad. Now, all you need to have to follow this tutorial is a notepad if you're on Windows or text edit if you're on Mac. So let's get started. Now to create a website using HTML, the first step is to open notepad on your computer. So to open notepad, let's go to start and then type notepad and press enter. So now we have our notepad. Once we have our notepad, next, Let's go to step two, which is to create a HTML file. So to create a HTML file, we are going to simply save this empty file as an HTML file. So to save this file as HTML, all you have to do is go to file and click save as. Now let's save this file on our desktop and here you need to give a name for your file. I'm going to name this as home. Now to save this file as an HTML file, we need to enter .html at the end of the name. So let's type .html and click save. Now if we go to our desktop, you can see that we've got our HTML file here. So now if you open it, you can see that the file opens in our browser. So now we've successfully created a HTML file which is displaying in this blank page. So as you can see here, this page is empty because we've not written anything yet. So next, let's create the first item on our page using HTML. Now if we enter any text here, then save our note and refresh the browser, you can see that we now have the same text on this web page which we entered here. Okay, now let's say you want to make this text big like a heading. We need to enter a h1 at the start and the end of the text. So let's type h1 here. Let's go here. And now let's type slash before the h1 and close the tag. Now if we save the file and refresh this page, you can see that we have now got the heading. So this is how HTML works. Now in the same way, you can add content to this page using the text and tags like these. Now like h1 tags, there are several other tags which you can use to build your page. To see a list of most popular tags, just click the link below this video. And here you can see a list of most common HTML tags and how you can use them. Let's go to the heading tag. Now let's say you want to add a smaller heading like this. You can add the h2 tag instead of h1. So first, let's enter the text that we want. Then close the h2 tag with a slash. Now if we save the file, go to the browser and click refresh, you can see that we have got the smaller heading. Okay, so now you know how to use HTML tags. Next, let's start building this page and make it into something like this. First, let's remove this heading and then change the heading to the one we want. I'm going to type new adventure in ice cream. Now if we save the file, then refresh the browser, you can see that we have got the heading. Once you have added the heading, let's say you want to add a paragraph of text under this heading. Let's go to the reference page and click here. So to add the text, we are going to use this tag called the paragraph tag. So let's go to our notepad and then type p tag and enter the text you want. Then close the p tag with a slash. So let's save this file. Go to the browser and click refresh. You can see that we have got our text here. Once you have added the text, next let's add a horizontal line here. So to add the line, we are going to use the hr tag. So let's type hr. Now since the line doesn't have any content inside it, it does not require an end tag. 
So just having an HR tag is enough to get the line. So now if we save the file and refresh the browser, you can see that we have got a line here. So now we have added the heading text line. Now let's say you want to bring this text to the next line like this. All you have to do is enter the break tag right here. So let's go here and then type the BR tag for a line break. Now if we save it and click refresh, you can see that we have added a break between these two lines. Now let's go here and add another break tag here. So let's save the file and click refresh. Okay, so now we have created this section. Next, let's see how you can change the design of these elements that we've added to the page. So to style these contents, we are going to use something called CSS. What is CSS? CSS tells our browser how to display these HTML elements on the screen. Now let's say you want to increase the size of this heading. All you have to do is just go to the H1 tag then enter space and type style equal to and then enter these two quotation marks. Now inside the quotes, you need to add the CSS code which will change the style of this heading. Now to change the size of this heading, let's go to our reference page. Here you can see some common CSS styles. Just click on it. Now to change the font size of this heading, we can use the font size CSS property. And this is the CSS code for changing the font size. Now let's copy this by clicking here. And then go back to our notepad. And paste it in between our quotes. So now we have told our browser that this element needs to have a font size of 50 pixels. So now if we save this file. And go to the browser. Then click refresh. You can see that our heading is now bigger. Okay, this is how you can change the style of any item on your page using CSS. Now you can do the same for any HTML tag that you want. For example, the paragraph tag or the HR tag. And you can also add multiple styles to the same tag. Now let's say you want this text to appear at the center of your page. You can do that by adding another CSS property to this element. Now to get the property for centering this text, Let's go back to our reference page and go to text align. This is the property which can align our text to the center. So let's copy this code and then keep your cursor after the semicolon of the first property. Then paste the new property. So now we've added both the font size and the text align property to this heading element. So now if we save the file and if we go here and then refresh our browser, you can see that our heading has been moved to the center. Now in the same way, let's change the style of this paragraph text too. So as we did before, let's go to the paragraph tag and then type style equals to and add the quotation marks. Now let's copy the same CSS code. and then paste it here. Now instead of 50 pixels, let's change the text size to 20. So now if we save it and click refresh, you can see that our style has been applied. Now here we can see that these lines are a bit too close to each other. So to add some space between these lines, let's go back to our reference page. And here you can see a property called line height. So let's copy that and paste it here. Now if we save the file and go to the browser and click refresh, you can see that it looks much better. Now let's say you want to add some space between this text and this line. How do we do that? So in CSS, we can use a property called margin to add space outside the element. So let's go to our reference page. 
then find the margin property. And as we need to add space to the bottom of our element, let's copy margin bottom property. And then go to the last style of a paragraph element, then paste the margin property here. Now if we save it and go to the browser and click refresh, you can see that our gap has been added. Okay, so now we have successfully completed styling our first section using CSS. Now let's say you want to add an image here. How do we do that? So next, let's see how you can add images to your website. Now to add the image, first you need to copy the image which we are going to use into the same folder where your HTML file is located. Now I have saved this HTML file on my desktop. So I'm going to copy these images that I want to use on this page to the same desktop folder. So let's copy the images and then paste it on the desktop. Once you're done, next, let's see how you can add this image to your website. So to add the image, we need to find the HTML tag for adding images to our page. So let's go to the reference page. Now in the HTML tag section, you will find the tag for adding images. Now this is the HTML tag that we need to use to add our image. So let's copy this code and then paste it here. Now here you can see that we need to add the name of our image like this where we have the file name along with its extension. So let's enter the file name of our image here. Now to get the file extension, just right click on the image and click properties. And here you can see the extension of the image which is .png. So let's go to notepad and type .png next to the file name. Now if you save this file, go to your web page and click refresh. You can see that we have now got our image. So now you know how you can add an image using HTML. Now in the same way, we will add two more images to our website. So we will copy this code and then paste it here. Now we will change the name of the images to match the exact file names that we have here. Now if we save it and click refresh, you can see that we have got our images. Now as you can see, these images are displayed one by one. Let's say you want to reduce the width of these images so that they can be displayed side by side like this. You can do that by adding an attribute to this image element. So the attribute that we are going to add is called width. Now to add the attribute, all you have to do is just go to the image element and type space style is equals to quotes. Let's go to the reference page and go to CSS styles. Here you can see the width property. Now let's copy the width from here and paste it. So let's say the total percentage of the browser is 100%. Now if we divide that by 3 for our 3 images, we get 33.33%. So let's enter 33% as the width for each image. So now if we save the file, go to the browser and click refresh, you can see that our image is evenly distributed across the browser size. Even if we change the browser size, you can see that the images automatically change their size and are always evenly distributed. So now you know how you can add images to your site. Now before we go to the next section, let's quickly add a heading before these images. So let's copy this heading and paste it here. 
And now let's change this text. So now if we save the file and refresh the page, you can see that we have got a heading above our images. Okay, so now we have successfully completed these two sections. Next, let's see how we can add a link like this to your website. By creating a link like this, you can redirect your users to other websites or even other pages on your website. For example, when we go to this site, you can see that when we click this link, it goes to a different page. So now let's see how you can create a similar link on your website. Now to find the HTML tag for creating a link, let's go back to our reference page. Now go to the link tag. And here you can see that this is the HTML tag for adding links. So let's go to our notepad and then keep the cursor where you want to add the link. As I want to add my link here after the paragraph, I'm going to keep my cursor here. Now to add the link, first we need to type the A tag which is called the anchor tag. Now inside the anchor tag, we need to add an attribute called href. This attribute will tell the browser where the link needs to go. So I'm going to type a href equal to and inside the quote, we need to enter the location of the page where the link needs to point to. So let's say you want the link to take people to google.com. So you just enter that link in between these quotes. So let's go to google.com. Then copy this link and paste it here. Now once you have added the link, next here you need to enter the text which needs to appear as a link on this page. So let's say you want the link to say read more. Let's enter read more here. And now if we save the page and go to our site, then click refresh. You can see that we have got a link. Now if we click on this link, you can see that it now takes us to google.com which we entered here. So this is how you can add links to your web page. Now in this link, we pointed to another website, which is google.com. But what if you want to link to another page on your own website? We can do that easily. I'll show you how you can do that later in this video. Now, as you can see, this link is not looking that attractive. So next, let's see how you can make this link into a button like this. Now to make this link into a button, we are going to use CSS again. First, let's increase the size of the button text. So let's go here and then type style equal to double quotes. Now let's copy the CSS for font size and then paste it here. And now if we save the page and click refresh, you can see that the font size has been increased. Next, let's add a background color to this button. So let's go to this tab. Now go to CSS styles and click background color. Now as you can see, this is the CSS which will change the background color. So let's copy this and then paste it here. Now you can change the color to anything you want. Now if we save this page and go to our site, then click refresh. You can see that we've got the red background color. Now as you can see, this is not looking good. We need to do three more things to make it look better. So once you've added the background color, next, let's see how you can add a space on all the sides of the button like this. So let's go to this tab. Now we are going to use the padding property. This will help you to add space inside the HTML element. Here as you can see, each value refers to space which needs to be added on each side of the element. So to add the space around the button, 
Let's copy this. Now let's go to the end of the previous CSS line on the A tag and then paste the padding property here. Now you can change these size values as you need. Now if you save the file and refresh it, you can see that a button has now got the right spacing. Next, let's change this text color to white. So let's go to the reference page and click color property. Now copy this code and paste it here. Now if we save and refresh, you can see that our text is now in white. Finally, let's bring this button to the center of this page. So to bring the elements to the center of the page, we have been using this CSS code. But this code will not work for a few elements. Now if we go to our reference page and click this, here you can find the list of elements which does not support the centering property. And here you will find the elements which support centering property. As you can see, the A tag does not support the text align property here. So to center this button, we need to put the A tag inside a div tag and then apply the CSS to it. A div tag is used for grouping the HTML elements together and can also be used to position elements on the page. So next, let's see how you can move this button which is an A tag to the center with the help of a div tag. So let's go to notepad. Now before the A tag, let's enter the div tag and then go to the end of the A tag and then close the div tag. Now to move this button to the center, we need to add CSS to this div tag. So let's type space style equal to double quotes and then copy this code and paste it here. Now if we click save and refresh, you can see that our button has now moved to the center. So now you know how you can add a button to your website and center it on your page. Next, let's see how you can add a video like this to your website. Now to add our video here, let's go to the reference page and click this. Here you can find the video tag which can be used to add a video to your website. So let's copy this and then go back to our notepad and paste it here. Now like we did before for adding images, inside the codes you can enter the name of the video file along with its extension. There's also another way in which you can add a video file or an image file to your site which is to put your files inside a particular folder and then point to it. So first, let's create a folder called video. And then copy our video to this folder. Now to add this to the website, we need to enter the location of this video in our HTML code. So let's go back to our notepad. And here, instead of just a file name, we need to add the location of the file before this name. Now as you can see, this is the location of our video and this is our file name. So let's enter both of them here. And as you can see, our folder is called video. Let's type video here and then type a slash. Now this tells our browser that it needs to look for this video inside the video folder. Now enter the file name and its extension which is mp4. So let's type .mp4. Once you're done, save the file and now if we go back to our website and click refresh, you can see that we have got our video. Okay. Now let's move this video to the center. As we saw before, the text align property 
will not work for a few elements. So if we go to our reference page and go here, you can see that video tag is not supported for text align property. So like we did before, we are going to add a div tag and then add CSS to it for centering the video. So we'll copy this div tag and then paste it here. Now close the div tag and save the file. Now if you go to your website and click refresh, you can see that the video has been moved to the center. Once you have added the video, let's quickly add a heading before this. So let's copy this heading and paste it here. And now let's change this text. Now if we click save and then click refresh, you can see that we have got a heading above our video. So now we have successfully added these contents to our site. Next, let's see how you can add a header like this which has a logo and a menu. First, let's see how you can add a logo to the top of our page. So to add a logo, let's go to our reference page and copy the image code here. Now go to notepad and paste it before the h1 tag. Now let's change the file name of our logo. So let's enter the file name and extension. Now if we click save and click refresh, you can see that we have got our logo. Now to move this logo to the center, like we did before, let's add the div tag. So let's copy the div code from here and then paste it above the image. Then close the div tag. Now save the file and click refresh. And as you can see, the logo has been moved to the center. Now let's say you want to add space above the logo. We can do that by adding margin top property. So let's go to this tab and go to CSS styles. Click margin. Now copy this code and then paste it here. Now if you save the file and click refresh, you can see that we have got the space above the logo. So now we have successfully added the logo. Next, let's see how you can add a simple menu like this to your website. So to add a menu, let's go to this reference page and go to HTML elements. Then click this link tag. Now this is the link which is going to help us create a simple menu. So let's copy this code. Then go to notepad and then paste the code here. In the same way, you can paste as many codes as you want. I'm going to create two more menu items. Once you have pasted the code, now instead of this text, let's add the name of the menu item we want. To do that, remove this text and then enter the name of the menu item you want. I'm going to enter home. Now in the same way, let's enter the name of the menu items for the other two links. Once you have done that, save the file and then go to this page and click refresh. You can see that we have got a menu. And as you can see, our menu is not looking like how we wanted it to look. So we will do the same styling that we have done here. To do that, we'll use the same code from here, which has CSS code for margin and centering. So let's select this. Copy this code till here and then paste it here. Once you've done that, close the div tag and once you're done, save the file. Now if we click refresh here, 
you can see that our menu looks much better now. Okay, now here you can see that there is not enough space between the menu items. So let's see how we can add space between the menu items and make our menu look better for the visitors. So to add space, we need to add a CSS property in the menu code. So to add it, let's go to this reference page. Go to CSS styles. Then click padding. Now this code will help you create the space between the menu items. So let's copy this code. Then go to notepad. Now before we paste the code, here we need to enter a new code. So after the A tag, let's enter the code which is style is equals to double codes. Now inside the double codes, let's paste the code which we copied earlier. Once you have pasted the code, now in the same way, let's add the same CSS property for the other menu codes. Once you have done that, save the file and click refresh. And now you can see that space has been added between the menu items. Okay, now you know how to add space between the menu items. And our menu looks much better now. Okay, now if you click on any menu item, you can see that it does not take us to any page. This is because we didn't add the link to our menu item. Now in order to make the menu work, first we need to create these pages and add a link to that page on our menu. So next, let's see how you can create another page on the website. Now instead of creating a new page from scratch, I'm going to take a copy of this page and then change its content. So let's go to the notepad, then go to file, click new window and a new window will be opened. Now let's copy this content in the home page and then paste it here. Once you have done that, save the file. Now here, enter the name of your page. I'm going to call it as about and then type .html to tell our computer that this is an HTML file and not a text file. Now make sure you save this file in the same folder where your home page is located and then click save. Now if we go to the file explorer and open the about page, you can see that we have got the same content which we have on our home page. So next, let's start editing this page. So to edit it, let's right click on the about file, then go here and click open with notepad. Then you will get this about page HTML code. Okay, now on this page, I only have the heading, a paragraph and a button. So first, let's remove these sections from the page. To do that, first let's select these codes and delete it. Once you have done that, let's start editing the content of our about page. First, I'm going to change the heading text and then the paragraph text. So now if we save it and click refresh, you can see that we have got our about page. So now we have created another page on our website. In the same way, you can create other pages on the website. Once you have created all the pages, let's minimize these two windows. And we have the HTML code for our home page. Once you have done that, next let's see how you can link these pages to the menu. So to do that, let's go to our home page's HTML code. Now instead of this hashtag, we need to add the links of the respective pages. Now as we want this home menu item to take us to our home page file, let's enter home.html instead of this hashtag. Now in the same way, let's add the link for other menu items. Once you're done adding the page file names, save the file. And now if you go back to the home page, click refresh. And if we click on about, you can see that it takes us to the about page which means the links have been added to our menu items. Now let's add the links to the other pages too. Once you're done, now if we go to our website, you can see that we have got clickable links on our menu. And now if we click on about, you can see that it takes us to the about page. And if you click on service, the service page will appear. Now we'll go back to home. So this is how you can add a menu on your website and then link it to the pages you want. Okay, so now we have successfully created our entire site. And now you know how you can build your entire website using HTML. Now as you can see, we have created our website locally on our computer. And this means this site can only be viewed by us from our own computer. Now let's say you want the site to be viewed by everyone on the internet from anywhere around the world. How can you do that? 
So next, let's see how you can make this website live for anyone on the internet. Once you do this, anyone in the world will be able to access it. Now to make this website live, we are going to do three steps. The first step is to choose a name for your website. So to choose the name, click the link below this video and it will take you to this page. Now enter the name you want here and click search. Now you can see that this name is available. Once you choose your website name, you can now go to the next step which is to get this domain name and hosting. Domain is the name of your website which people need to enter to visit your site. Hosting is the place where your website's files are stored on the internet. Right now, we have our website files here on our computer and see your website from the mobile or computer. You need to get the hosting which will store these files on the internet and can be accessed by anyone. So to get this domain name and hosting, click get domain. Let's click add to cart. Click continue and it will take you to this page. Now here it will ask us to choose our hosting plan. Now hosting is needed so that your website is visible on the internet and can be accessed by anyone. And as you can see here, it provides the space to store your website on the internet. So based on the number of websites that you want to build, you can choose a plan here. I want to build one website. So I am going to choose this plan. Now here you can choose how long you want the hosting for. You can choose any length here. And as you go longer, you can see that we are getting a discount. Now I am going to choose 12 months and click continue. Now here you can see that we are getting our domain for free and our hosting. Now both of these are valid for one year which means once we complete this purchase, our site will be live on the internet for one year. So to get our domain and hosting, let's fill up these details. Now here enter your details. Choose the payment method you want. Here again enter your details. And click order now. Okay, so now we successfully placed the order and we've got a domain and hosting. So now if we click here, you can see that we have successfully got a hosting and domain. So once you've got your hosting and domain, now if we open a new tab and we enter a domain name which is scoopice.com, you can see that we have got this page. This means our site is now live. And now we can go to the third step which is to upload our HTML website files to our hosting. To do that, go to WordPress hosting, click hosting, now click here, then scroll down and click file manager and you will get this page. Now click public HTML folder and here we need to upload our files. So to upload our files, click upload here. Now let's open the folder which has our HTML files. So once you have these files ready, instead of uploading them one by one, we are going to compress them into one file. So to compress it, let's select all the files, then right click, go to send to and click compress file. Now you will get this zip file. Now just drag the zip file from your computer and drop it here. The file will be uploaded to your hosting account and once this is done, if you click go back, you can see that we have got a zip file. Now to complete the upload, we need to extract all our website files from the zip file. So to extract the files, just select zip file, then click extract. Now click extract files. And now if we click close, you can see that all our website files are now extracted. Once you extract the zip file, now if we go to this tab and click refresh, you can see that we have got our website files here. Now if we click on any file, it will take you to this page. Now instead of clicking on the files from here, if you want to directly visit your site after entering your domain name, we need to add a code to our hosting. To do that, let's go back to this tab. Click settings here. Now enable this and click save. And as you can see, we have got some more files now. Now to get our site directly when entering the domain name, we need to add a code in this file. So just right click on it, click edit and again click edit. 
Now go to the video you're watching right now. And in the description, you will find the code which has to be added to your hosting. So just copy the code. Go back to the hosting and paste it here. And then click save changes. Now if you open a new tab and enter our domain name which is scoopice.com you can see that our website is live. This is how you can publish your website live on the internet. Now you know how to publish your site by getting the hosting and domain and you can access your website by using the short domain name. But if you don't want the short domain name and just want to publish your website online there's another way to do it which is completely free. So next we're going to see how you can publish your website on the internet for free. In this free method, you will be given a custom link like this for your website and anyone can access your website using that link. But you will not be having a short domain name for your website like website.com or .org. So to publish your site for free, we are going to do 4 steps. The first step is to create an account in GitHub. This is the website which is going to help us publish our site on the internet. Go to github.com and click sign up. Now to create an account, fill up these details and click create account. So now we have successfully created our account on GitHub. Once you have created your account, we can now go to the next step which is to create a new project. So let's click here and here you need to give a name for your project. Now enable this option called public, click create repository and it will take you to this page which means your project is now created. Once you have created your project, we can now go to the third step which is to upload your website files. So to upload your files, click on uploading an existing file. Now before uploading our website files, make sure your home page is named index since GitHub will look for the index named file as the entry file for your site. Ours is called home so let's rename it to index. Ok, now if you remember, we added a link to our home page in the menu. We added home.html. But since we've renamed our home page to index, if someone visits our site and clicks on our home page, it does not take them to the home page. So to fix this, we need to change this link to index.html. So to do that, let's right click on the index.html page, then go to open with and click notepad. Now you will get the home page HTML code page. To allow the visitors to get the home page, select this home and rename it to index. Once you have done that, save the file. And finally, close this index page HTML code. Ok, so now we've changed the menu item link which is home.html to index.html. In the same way, we need to rename the link home.html to index.html to the other pages. So let's change it for the about page. Like we did before, Right click on about page file, then go to open with, click notepad and you will get the about page html code. Now let's select home and rename it to index. Once you have done that, save the file and close this file. Like we did before, let's rename the link from home.html to index.html for the service page. Ok, once you have these files ready, just drag the files and drop them here. As you can see, the files are being uploaded. Once the files are uploaded, scroll down and click commit changes. So now we successfully uploaded the files to our website. Once you are done, next let's go to the final step which is to publish your site. So to publish your site, let's go to settings, click pages. Now click here and select main. Then click save and now as you can see our site is ready and we have got the site link here. To check that just click the link and as you can see we have got the exact site we created live on the internet. So this is how you can publish your HTML site on the internet for free. Ok, that's it guys. Now you know how you can create your own website from start to end using HTML. If you're ready to make the website on your own using HTML, 
just click the link below this video and it will take you to the reference page which we saw in this video. So make sure you use it and start creating a website today. And if you want to learn how to create a website easily without coding, you can watch this video. Now while creating your site, if you need content for your pages or if you want to add blog posts, there's an amazing AI tool that creates unique SEO optimized content. It's called Gravity Right. You can check it out using the link in the description. So thanks for watching guys. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care. Bye bye.